guys, what's up? This is the Michael M here, 1997. I haven't done a video in a while, guys, and I'm really am sorry about that. And before I go into this review of Mortal Kombat 10, which you can see here, I'm just gonna be saying that uh, this uh, state review, which I'm doing, is basically just like a, a simple editing because I'm using iMovie on my iPad to do these reviews from now on. And this is only temporary though, so uh, I will be going back to my old style review, which is uh, gameplay footage, montage, add a voiceover, a little bit of the music in there, you know? Just for you guys, you know? Try to be satisfied. Um, I will be doing a vlog to explain why this kind of situation has happened. A uh, slight spoiler, I did uh, talk about it on Facebook on a yeah, community group, 3KB, community support group. You can check them out over there. Um, but first, let's just get into the game here. Mortal Kombat 10 is here, finally. And I'm a month late for review, yes. But I just need to talk about the game. I had this idea on my over and over, just talking about the game over and over and over again. And uh, I'll go do a gameplay montage review when I get my um, new software and all that stuff. I'll tell you more of it in the vlog later on. But Mortal Kombat 10 is one of those anticipated games 2015, you know? It's, it, it has a lot to live up to. It's another one of the studios, the guys behind Mortal Kombat 9, which rebooted the franchise. Um, then they were, they also did Injustice Gods Among Us, which also uh, we, um, it, it also uh, updated and added new mechanics to the fighting genre, to the fighting genre. And Mortal Kombat 10 has a lot to live up to. It's a tough game in the series. It's taking its storyline out of the tournament uh, sto uh, idea and opening up to a new story idea. Um, so how is it overall? Mortal Kombat 10 is an outstanding game. Well, even though it does suffer from some corporation issues that you know is hiding the details. For example, I want to show you a few. For example, for some reason, the developers decided to add, yes, microtransactions. Which I don't even understand, why do developers have to do this? I mean, if you can release your game out to the community, then you know they're going to buy it. You're going to get money from it. Plus, the DLC pack like this, this is fine DLC. Don't get me wrong, this is a great DLC pack. 30 bucks for 4 characters and 15 skins possibly, right? But what I don't understand is this type of shit. Look at this crap. This is complete... You might not be able to see it, but I'll explain to you. Easy fatalities. 5 easy fatalities for a dollar. 30 easy fatalities for 5 bucks. This is, it's a stupid microtransaction practice, which I don't support, and I don't think anyone should buy it. If my person may stay away from the easy fatalities. And why do you need them? You know, there is something called, um, wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Uh, fatality practice. So you can get the combinations in your head. You melt it in that brain of yours. Memorization. It's something that everyone does, you know? And, you know, there is costume skins, which I, I'm, I'm not the uh, biggest fan of. I think it's cool looking. But you could, but what I found surprising is you could earn these easy fatalities in the crypt, which I'll explain to you more in the game. You could earn these, uh, which actually some post reviewers before they get the game copy for review talk about how they're all over the place. But then they, once the game came out, they, uh, they reduced how many you can find in this in the crypt. So you can buy these five or one dollar add-ons, which is completely stupid. What's worse is the fact that there's this, this also unlock all crypt items. Unlock all crypt items really? Then what's the point of going into the crypt, which is really awesome? We all of it down for 20 bucks, which is a stupid practice, and I don't like it at all. And, you know, I'm fine with Goro, but I don't like the fact that he just pushed in your face if you didn't buy him. He's five dollars, and he just pushed him in your face, and you can play him through Living Tower, but it's unfair. And you want to know why? Because Goro is on the damn disc. He was locked on the damn disc, so he was 100% ready for fighting, but they locked him on the disc, so, you can just purchase him. They did the same thing with Evolve. Like, he, they weren't locked on the disc, but you can tell like the Evolve DLC characters, they're pushing in your face just to buy them. In my personal opinion, if they DLC characters, don't show them in my face if I didn't buy them. Uh, show them in my face when I do buy them, okay? Put, you can show them like in the, the store menu, so it reminds me to buy them later on, you know? The Goro stuff and the microtransactions for the easy fatalities on its own is a stupid practice and I disapprove it overall. Alright, but well, that's not what the game is about, microtransactions and practices, right? Why am I talking about them? I should be talking about the main core of the game. Now first before we go into anything, we'll talk about the game story. And for those who told um, who are saying in the comments, if anyone actually watches or comments, um Michael, games this fighting game is about story, it's all about action, combos, and all about combinations. Now, that's story. We don't need the story. Number one, shut up. You don't talk, okay? 
Number two, I like to have a narrative in my storyline, you know? Just to add more context to it and to actually give the game more value. Okay, so if you are actually thinking that this game does not need a story or any narrative at all, just about pressing buttons, then it's it's just like, I don't know, like it's really simplistic overall, just a simple thing. And you know, that's that in this little box that you have of thinking. But you know what? Nothing else you get little developers that took narrative storytelling and put it in a game of fighting. And they did it greatly in 2011 with Mortal Kombat 9 or Mortal Kombat, which they rebooted and they made a storyline that was actually amazing, well crafted, and actually, well, actually satisfying. It wasn't disappointing or weak, and it didn't feel bad. They duplicated that uh, success over to Injustice Gods Among Us. Even if it's a little shorter, it's still a great game with a great narrative and a great storytelling. And then they bring it for the third time with the third look charm, Mortal Kombat 10. And how does it deliver on storytelling? Surprisingly, for a game that takes its story uh, idea uh, concept out of the tournament ideas, it uh, actually satisfies. Now, people always complain about the languages four hours, but to be honest, I beat the campaign in five hours. I went straight through it, five hours of awesome combinations in, in a 12 character system. Um, to be honest, it was shorter than Mortal Kombat 9 and more Injustice Gods Among Us. Mortal Kombat 9 took me around like uh, seven hours max, while Injustice Gods Among Us took me around six hours. And uh, this one took me around five hours to complete. And personally, it's fine. I mean, I don't want like a 12 to 20 hour fighting game because I felt like it would have dragged itself on. I'm fine with this like not super long campaign, but it's satisfying overall. I mean, when Justice had 12 chapters, and I believe Mortal Kombat had 12 chapters just like this one. I think it's the pacing here is just uh, surprisingly uh, speeding up just to make it more gameplay centric, you know? So the story here is it takes place. Um, it jumps between a 25 year jump from the last game where most of Earthrealm's defenders were murdered while trying to stop Shao Kahn's rule of Earthrealm. Basically, Shao Kahn's dead. Spoiler alert, sorry, but you should have played Mortal Kombat a long time ago, boys. Four years ago, came out. So, um, back to the point is, is basically a, a, a former Elder God, Shinnok, who is just evil, wants to destroy Earthrealm, and he wants to take Earthrealm's uh, nature core energy called the Jinsei. Use it for evil and wants to just take over, destroy everything. He's basically like Thing House, basically. Uh, and and he gets captured, of course. And then it jumps to the 25 year timeline where we have the next generation of fighters. Like uh, Takeda Taka Takahashi, who is the son of Kenshi. We have Jackie Briggs, the son of Jackson Briggs. Cassie Cage, the daughter of Jack Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade. All these characters uh, all have. Um, uh, more, uh, add more development, and it's surprising like that. And uh, although some people will, uh, cri criticize the campaign because we're, uh, the game is adding 12 new, uh, not 12, 8 new characters in the storyline, which is amazing, which is surprising on its own, it, they all have, um, they don't all have satisfying moments because some are sort of side characters, but you can tell that some of them weren't meant to be main characters. For example, Farron Tor. Tor is just a guy who screams and grunts and is a gigantic group. Or Farron's a little girl who just, like, is, talks not perfectly. Um, it's fine by me, the character, like, how they're set, played in the story. And each one is also unique and, and diverse to how the new player characters play. It's all well done. Now, in story-wise, it all ends on a satisfying note as well. And it also is something in the credits. Which I found actually surprising, as I don't know where they're gonna take the campaign's direction this time around. I mean, they always took the game out of the tournament storyline. Are they gonna bring it back to the tournament storyline, or are they gonna change it up entirely again? Who knows? But Netherland really did a good job with the story overall. I didn't find that many problems with the story, to be honest. Not that many problems at all, really, with it. And I found like it was overall satisfying. Now, done with storytelling about, let's get into a few of the good things in the game. I mean, storytelling was great overall. There's even quick time events in the story. There's a lot more longer cinematics I forgot to mention. But thankfully, the thing, quick time events, the cutscenes, they don't, they're not failure quick time events, so they're not annoying to some who hate quick time events. So overall, uh, the campaign is a thumbs up for me, two thumbs up actually, and I really do think it's a good job. <coughs> now visually, the game looks beautiful, running at 60 frames per second, and I got it on uh, PS4 at 1080p. Visually, the game looks beautiful. All the characters, the uh, costume designs, and the ultimate costume designs, all look beautiful. And each one has detail. Like, um, the Devorah uh, uh, character, 
her the way she moves around and her body and her scales and her her costume and her cloak and all that, it all is interesting. Like there's more backstory to the costumes overall. Even the backgrounds have more story behind them. Like the woods, like the dead woods in here, where there's like wolves in the background moving around, or on like a cove area where there's like a a, a, board, like a ship and entering to a port. Uh, there's even backstory into that one, like, not actually, actually, but you always want to make a backstory, like, there's a, like, a cave, looks like a, a, a skull face, it all has all this, like, mythology behind it, that you can just create by on your own, which is really amazing how the developers really do that with this. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but they did. I'll give them that. Um, so, visually, it looked outstanding, it's perfect visually quality looking. Um, so how about gameplay? And gameplay is important because this is a fighting game. It has to be quick, smooth, and it has to play well. How does it play? Well, it actually plays amazing. It's one of the best fighting games in a while. All upside uh, Mortal Kombat and just got the Um, uh, so the combat system is really well uh, done here. All the characters have great move, uh, controls, combinations, and mixed and mashups. Do you have new uh, fatalities are back once again? And they're even more brutal than before. Oh yeah, they even were than last time. And instead of stage fatalities or bay ballads being just a shame to be gone, they decided to bring back brutalities, which is awesome to do. However, some of them can be hard to do, for example, like um, the Jacks and Briggs is uh, a wrestling where you drag, he throws the body over and over to different areas until their arms and legs fall off. That one's way too hard to do. Like, if, if there was a way to do brutality tutorials, I really wish they would have implemented that because, in my personal opinion, the brutality is going to do and some of these characters are too complicated for even for me to figure out. Um, personally, if there was free uh, brutality tokens, I would ex I would appreciate that because they're not uh, they are harder to do than the brutalities themselves. Um, they even brought back the extras once again, which is great visual gory animations. When you, uh, there's a three bar system, so the first bar would allow you to do X special attacks, uh, the second bar is a combo break, and the third bar is an X, which I forgot to mention. But the X rays are back and they are intense as usual. Bones break, necks snap, eyes are gorged out, faces are broken, necks are broken as well, chests are broken, backs are broken, anything could get broken in the X ray mark, and it gets broken instantaneously. It is amazing to play. Mortal Kombat because of how smooth the combat is. Uh, the other games people will tell you the combat would take too long. Every round will take a long time to complete. But surprisingly, in Mortal Kombat 10, the combat is a lot more smoother and because it makes it more faster. So you can do quick rounds just like that. Make it faster, quick it up, and make it actually much more satisfying. And surprisingly, the developers also made a big innovation in the variation system. So for every character, there's a variation system for each one. For example, Scorpion, the first one off has uh, three variations Inferno, um, Hellfire, and Ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is all about sword combat. The Inferno is about bringing a demon minion from hell to help attack enemies, and Hellfire is all about fire moves. So he has a flame ball move, he has a Hellfire, which he raises fire from hell to burn his enemies, and he has fire aura, which makes his fire abilities even stronger. And um, which is cool is that each one even has diversity behind him. Uh, other characters like Raiden. And Quan Chi, they also have uh, different uh, variations as well. Like, for example, Raiden has Master of Storm, he has um, a Spark of Displacer, and he has some of And what's, but However, some people will complain that variations are also limited because some moves are taken away from certain characters. For example, I'll give you an example, which is a big one. Raiden's Teleport is only placed in one variation instead of all variations. Which is not a big problem for me, because to be honest, I never used to Teleport that much at all. I mean, some people used it because they didn't want to get hit all the time, but it, was, it wasn't it was that big of a deal. I mean, personally, the Spark Teleport idea is a cool one because I like it overall. Um, overall, variation system, I think, is a, a great add-on. And I think we should actually add more to it in the in Mortal Kombat 11. Because the Mortal Kombat, like, uh, the more the Mortal Kombat grows and, and evolves, the more ridiculous it gets, and the more they can add on to it. And that actually makes it much more satisfying. Which is all fun. Um, also, they also brought in tons of living towers. Like, there's uh, your arcade tower to find out characters' endings. There is a classic uh, survivor tower. 
for you. If you get damage while being a player, that damage will go over to the next level. There is uh, endless mode where you fight endless enemies, but they get harder to out. There is um, test your might mode, which is fun to play once you get quick time buttons. There's also test your luck, which is uh, what used to be a party gimmick mode. It's like Mario Party, but for combat. It's like Mortal Kombat Party, where there's all these modifiers like instant kill, touches, or god hands, or rain of cabal assist. Um, it's all fine me. It's all well done though. And there's even um, living towers, which is these uh, towers that it, it always change like every hour, every day, and every week, or every premiere week. Which all is well done here as well. And they're all randomly generated, con um, procedurally generated, that's what it's called. Procedurally generated content for you to play for hours on end. What's cool about it is that it always brings you back. So you never feel like, okay, I don't know with that tower, I don't want to play no more. Every day, you always come back to World of Combat to always play some another tower because it feels interesting. Um, and then there's uh, the faction mode, which is you have to pick a faction straight away. There's five factions you can pick in the game: Lin Kuei, White Lotus, Black Dragon, Brotherhood of Shadows, and the Special Forces. Now, what this is is that um, they bring these factions in so you can get also faction fatalities, but they're not as gruesome as the fatalities themselves. But they're not supposed to. Just all fine men. It's like an extra add-on for fatalities, just to add on, so you don't have to do the same two fatalities over and over again. Which is all fine by me. Um, I, also, I found it really intriguing because there's all these faction challenges that you must do every single day to help support your cause to make a, to uh, lead up to an invasion war where your team can get on top. And it's all so fun. However, as of now, it's balanced actually. At, at first, it was unbalanced because everyone would usually pick Lin Kuei or White Lotus, and no one would go to um, uh, Black Dragon or Special Forces. But it's not evenly balanced now because <coughs> because if you because uh, you always want to see what does the other team have for faction kills that your team your team didn't get, and always when this feeling of coming back to it. You can also change factions whenever you want to, which is always a good choice to do. So if you don't like one faction, you can just play with another faction, which is always a good choice to bring to your game. It gives it much more, um, um, what is it, wide variety for players out there. Um, there's also the crit, which makes a big return, and they even uh, added more to the crit as ever. It takes a first person point of view, so it's not third person, it's not like you're just like floating around, you have to walk around and not do puzzles, but it's like a, a RPG, and you have to go to caves, find certain items to unlock areas so you can um, go through more caves and unlock anything. So in the crypt you'll find stuff like concept art, fan art, costumes, fatalities, brutalities, um, music skins, music, concept art, fan art, all types of stuff in there. You can even coins, little add-ons you can find. And there's even hidden costumes throughout the game you can find by doing certain challenges. Um, I'll give you an example of one. For example, if you want a, a hot shot Johnny Cage skin, you have to get a 10 win streak in Te King of the Hill Survivor online in a public match, not private. Um, you can also uh, unlock Revenant Jack skin, which is easy to do by basically um, winning uh, 15 matches in custom combat 2 players. That easy. There's all these types of skins that's hidden in the game for you to find online, or you can find a guy to help you out with that stuff. All fine, um, which is also really well done. The Christmas is really well done. It's they can even expand on even more in the next game. Even though I wish they would cut down from the quick time event uh, jump scare, which really pissed me off. It kind of makes not playing the on uh, the quick at times. <coughs> and I think I've gone through most of it. But we have to talk about Mortal Kombat 10's online modes, which are well done this most of the time. They, um, let's talk about what they had. They had the room once again. Where you can hang out with big groups of people and basically make rules and make parties. You can go to other people and request a battle with them in certain modes. Um, there's also ranked matches, there's team battles, there's faction battles. All types of King of the Hill returns with Survivor and Classic, which is all well fun to do when you could, uh, you could put emoticons and emo emojis on uh, when you're voting. You can also uh, put respect points, which is all, all too awesome to do. And it's all just fast satisfying. The only problem that Harlem has as of right now is occasional lag, which I think should be fixed in another update or a patch. Who knows? There might be working a patch for that to fix online. But it's kind of unacceptable at this point that I still find matches which are some horrible connections to the point where the frame rate drops like this. 
and it kind of sucks. And I think that this game kind of needs online support, like right now. I mean, get some dedicated servers, WB Games. Uh, give um, Netherlands enough uh, money to dedicate for servers. I mean, because servers, because yeah, online is kind of important for this game. You should unlock a lot of the skins that you want to buy. Like, then just this skin, you don't need to play online with that. Um, you could, uh, all the skins out there, it's hard to get if you're not playing online. And the online is kind of important for the game. And it's just, as, as long as it's online, it's offline. It's that type of situation. You know, so overall, and that's what I kind of feel about the overall game. Now, I think I finished everything. So let's go over what we do. Let's go over a few things. Visually, beautiful. Gameplay, great. Controls, I forgot to mention, it's all well controlled. There's no problem with the layout, in my personal opinion. Um, Storyline is satisfying and good overall, even though it's shorter than the others. Um, uh, Jesus, I might throw a short as hell. Uh, online is fine, even with some occasional lag. Music wise, it sounds great. The sound design is top notch. Bones crush, when bones break, it sounds like bones are breaking. Uh, intestines are crushed, it sounds like they're being crunched and all. It all feels realistic and visceral. It all feels satisfying. Um, music uh, is well done, even though it's not that much noticeable. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to do in fighting games. The environment and the background, they all look amazing. The character models, they look amazing. The amount of skins you can get for them. The different variation system is well done. Who knows? It's a really top Mortal Kombat 10. It's going to be a really big challenge for them, you know? Because they added 8 new characters who all play well, and not one feels like they're pushed in just because they have to be. It all feels satisfying. So, that sums up this review all in a nice little bow tie. So, what can I give Mortal Kombat 10 on my PS4 review? To be honest, I'm going to have to give Mortal Kombat 10 a 9.5 out of 10. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna give it a 9.5 due to the fact that it's online lag and it's shorter length in campaign mode. Saying that though, I still say buy Mortal Kombat 10. And if you want if you're gonna get the DLC, please make sure you buy online, because if you lose all that connection, you can't play with any of the DLC. Yeah, bad news. I know. But overall, Mortal Kombat 10 is a great game. It's one that I recommend playing. It's one that's worth uh, picking up at a price at any time now. Um, for PS3 and 360 users, you're going to wait a little bit longer. It comes out in June for those PS3 and 360 users. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not my choice to decide when it comes out. But, you know, so I feel sorry for you. Um, you have to wait a little longer. Um, so, guys, please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel, Be My Fellow 7 where you can check out my review of Bloodborne. Yes, I did review Bloodborne. I did a good job on that. You can also check out videos of me um, talking about stuff like um, I talked about news for a little bit. It wasn't that long because I had stuff for destroyed. I'm straight, but screwed over. Screwed me over. Um, so guys, please um, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about Mortal Kombat. Um, do you recommend Mortal Kombat? Do you, did you enjoy it? What would you give it out of 10? Is this your favorite Mortal Kombat game in the series today? I don't know. It's up to you guys, okay? So I'll see you guys in our next episode of Demon Killer and Tangry 7. In our review, I don't know. Something, okay? So bye guys. See you later and enjoy watching this video. Have a good one.